today I'm talking about the American actor Robert Harron, who tragically died at the age of 27. Robert Harron, otherwise known as Bobby Harron, was an American silent film star. He was born Robert Emmett Harron on the 12th of April 1893 in New York City. He was the second oldest child of nine children born into a poor working class Irish Catholic family. Robert's brothers and sisters, John, Mary and Charles, also went into the acting profession. A sister, Tessie, was a film extra. There was a lot of tragedy in the Harron family. Robert's sister, Frances, died when she was just two years old in 1909. Charles was killed in a car accident on Christmas Eve in 1915 at the age of 23. Tessie died in the Spanish influenza pandemic in 1918 at the age of 22. John Harron appeared in 167 films. He died of spinal meningitis in 1939 at the age of 36. He was the only sibling of the nine children to marry and he had one child, Colleen. She funnily enough also had nine children. His four other sisters, Mary who had one film credit as an extra, Agnes, Madeline and Edna lived to old age. Their father John was murdered at the age of either 62 or 63. He was working in a gas station in 1930 and there was a robbery. His body was found burning in an incinerator. Robert became an errand boy at American Biograph Studios located at 11 East 14th Street in New York City when he was either 13 or 14. While being employed in this role, he managed to get some extra film work. In a short time, Robert was discovered by director D.W. Griffith. He then cast him in lots of his movies. In 1912, Robert appeared in just under 40 films for Biograph. In total, he acted in over 200 films. He was cast in sweet, homely, sensitive boy roles, which fitted him well as he was so young and had a demure nature in real life. He was a popular star in these early days of the movie industry. He is best known for his roles in three Griffin movies, Judith of Bethulia in 1914, with Blanche Sweet, May Marsh and Dorothy and Lillian Gish, The Birth of a Nation in 1915 with Wallace Reed and Intolerance with Lillian Gish, May Marsh and Constance Talmadge in 1916. In 1919 he starred opposite Lillian Gish in the movie True Heart Susie, one of his most popular movies. Here they are in the film and subsequent photographs are of them in this film. Things changed when D.W. Griffith found a new protégé in the actor Richard Bothelmus. He cast him in his new movie, Way Down East, and he loaned Robert to Metro Pictures for a full picture deal. His first film for Metro, which turned out to be his final film, was the comedy Coincidence with June Walker. In late August 1920, Robert took a train journey from Los Angeles to New York City to see a preview of Coincidence and the premiere of Way Down East. On the 1st of September, he checked into the Hotel Seymour, located at 44 West 45th Street in Manhattan with his friend, director and screenwriter, Victor Heerman. They were sharing a room. They would regularly go on double dates with actresses Dorothy Gish and Constance Talmadge. Here is Dorothy Gish, Lillian's sister. Here is Constance Talmadge. Victor and Robert went to see a preview of his movie Coincidence and it didn't go down well. Victor tried to reassure him. Victor left to go to a studio in Fort Lee to work on a screenplay. Later Robert called the hotel desk for help. He had been shot. He was still conscious and able to communicate. He told the hotel manager he was in a devil of a fix. He apparently refused the offer of an ambulance. He wanted a doctor to attend to him in his hotel room. A doctor wasn't available at such short notice and an ambulance was called. The paramedics tried to take Robert downstairs on a stretcher, but he refused. He wanted to be taken down in a chair. I think they finally got him onto a stretcher as he was in such a bad way. In the ambulance, Robert kept repeating that he didn't want to die. He was taken to Bellevue Hospital Centre at 462 First Avenue in Manhattan. Robert remained conscious. However, he was arrested at the hospital for possessing a firearm without a permit and he was put into the prison ward. 
The telephone rang at the studio where Victor was working. This is the hotel. Mr. Harron has just shot himself, the manager explained. Victor rushed to the hospital. Robert was awake and Victor asked him why he hadn't talked to him. Robert said, you don't think I did this? He told him he was getting his trousers out of the trunk. He said that his younger brother Johnny was getting out of control. There was a gun in their home and apparently Robert took it and wrapped it in his trousers and put both items in his trunk. He didn't want to leave the gun in the house. He decided to get his trousers out and the gun fell, went off, shooting him in the left side of his chest and puncturing his lung. According to Lillian Gish, Bobby had bought the gun from a homeless vagrant who needed money. He forgot the gun was in his coat pocket and it fell to the ground and shot him. A policeman sent to the hotel was told the same story that it fell from his pocket. A man called Stephen Bibb heard that a policeman on the scene was told that the 38 calibre gun was discharged accidentally while cleaning it. Robert told a priest at the hospital that the shooting was accidental. Friends thought he would recover, but four days after the shooting, he died on the 5th of September, 1920. A man called Joe Fanning did a presentation for the Museum of Modern Art. He apparently got hold of Robert's autopsy report and there was a powder burn, which means the gun was close up. The powder burn wouldn't have occurred if the gun had fallen to the floor. He was shot on the left side of his chest, the location of his heart. The reasons for him to deliberately shoot himself were thought to be because of D.W. Griffith passing him over for the role in Way Down East and him focusing on actor Richard Bathomas and so he couldn't face going to the premiere. Also, his preview of his new film Coincidence had gone badly and Robert had recently broken up with Dorothy Gish. Actresses Miriam Cooper and Lillian Gish and Victor Hillman rejected the idea Robert had done it deliberately. This was because Robert was a devout Roman Catholic. He was about to start shooting another movie and he was the family's breadwinner. It was the first time the movie industry had to deal with the release of a film whose main star had died. It is thought the story about buying the gun from the homeless person was made up. The accident theory was promoted because at that time Robert wouldn't have been allowed to be buried in a Roman Catholic cemetery if he had killed himself. His last film coincidence was released in 1921. Dorothy Gish married Canadian-born actor James Rennie in a double wedding ceremony with Constance Talmadge and businessman John Pegaloo in 1920. Here is Dorothy and James. In her book, The Movies, Mr. Griffith and Me, Lillian Gish said that Bobby Harron had brought Rudolf Valentino into their group because he was the newcomer. Dorothy Gish, Bobby, Rudolph and Lillian, with other friends, would go riding together. Rudolph's two passions were dancing and horses. After riding, Rudolph would go into the kitchen and make more spaghetti. Wouldn't that have been a treat, having Rudy make you spaghetti? According to Joe, who spoke to one of Bobby's sisters, D.W. Griffith was so upset that he sent money to Mrs. Harron every month and it continued to be sent after his death via a clause in his will until she died in 1955. Robert was buried in the 2nd Cavalry Area, Section 6B, Range 13, Plot A, Grave 3 in Cavalry Cemetery in Woodside, Queens, New York City. I wasn't able to obtain a copyright free photo of Robert's grave, so find below in the description the link to the photo of his grave. Robert's story was so tragic wasn't it and he had so much to live for. So if you like this video please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell and I'll see you in the next one.